to me that I'm just making sure this thing is on. That um, as I begin to build this base map for the Davidson project, that I should probably show you all what I'm doing in AutoCAD as well. Um, I the person finally got back to me um, with the JS information. So now, as you can see, in CAD I have parcels, topography, which I already had. Um, I have structure, and I had, there's actually ortho, but I'm not going to bring this in. I didn't convert it to PDF yet, for or JPEG to insert it into um into CAD. So it's still SID. Um, but I'll show you in the next tutorial how to actually create the pretty maps and pulling all everything together in Photoshop from exported um, ArcMap PDFs. Okay, so let me back up a little bit and show you that export from. Arc map. And you see I have all my layers in now and, and you everybody will have this by the um end of the week. But again, you simply go to your arc toolbox here, this icon, export to CAD, double click, and you simply just select the layers that you want to put in. <clears throat> when you get all the layers selected, I'll just put one in to show you. So I'm doing parcels. Um Output as 2000, like I said, save it to an older format of CAD so you make sure that you can open it. Um, specify as file location here, and you simply click OK. All right, I'm not going to do it again because I've done it once. Um, I navigated to the file, I opened AutoCAD, navigated to that file, opened it up, and this is what I got. And like I told you, it brings everything over, it brings everything over into. Um, into the layers that you specify. So all I had to do was then go in, and I'm, I'm always telling you guys, layer management is change the colors of my layers because we're going to use the LDR 2000 or whatever, whatever the, your CTV, your pen setting you're using for AutoCAD, um, so you can control your line weights and help your drawing read better. So I went and just first thing I did was I jumped in here and began uh, manipulating the color, the line type. And remember, you don't have to worry about line weight. That's why we're using pen settings because the color is, re is representative of, of a line weight. So once you become acclimated to using a certain pen setting, you want to think about um, what that line weight needs to be anymore because you already figured that out. And the way that the LDI that I provided you all work is it, it runs up that ramp from color. If I click on this color, the way the LDI works, it goes from red is the thinnest line to white being the dark. And you can also go through and modify these characteristics. I'm not going to go into that in this lecture. But if you're curious and you can't wait, um, then you can always pop online and ask the question how to uh, modify pen settings or just go through the help within your AutoCAD. Okay, so I've, you know, typical line styles. Um, you know, your dash, dat, your dash line for your contours existing. Um, then you have <coughs> your double dash for property and triple dot long dash for water and center and so on and so forth. So you pick your appropriate line type and you allocate that to um, to the CAD. And that's just simply going into your layer um, properties um, box here and pulls this up. Um, the, the second thing that I did, and I do this when I know what my scale is going to be, and I'm setting the scale for you all at 20 scale, and you all can change it if you want. I'm not sure what um, she had in mind, maybe 10, so I'm not sure. But I'm using 24 by 36 sheet, um, and I set it to 20 scale. So, in order to get my line weights, because you know that, let me show you, uh, if you watched older, older, older lecture, you play with CAD a little bit, you know that um, what you set your line type scale, just because you specify a line type, the line type scale can dr dramatically affect how, that, how you view that. So, when I made this thing one, you see how much longer these dashes have become, right? So, you need to modify that. Well, I know my scale is going to be 20, so one of the things that I do typically for drawings I'll type in the command, close it out for now, line type scale, L-T-S-C-A-L-E. And as you can see here, it's set to 20. I set it to 20, and what it does is it allows you to see in model space um, how that line type is going to be viewed within that particular scale. And some of this might sound like, what did he just say? Bear with me. The more you work with CAD, um, the the, the better you'll understand what I'm saying and hopefully maybe th this exercise will bring some clarity to that for you but that's what I did and Anna I think it's stuck please help me um, <laughs> but yeah so I set that to, to 20 so when you all get this base map you will have it set to a 20 scale um, 
to make sure that I can see the same way in paper space, which is this space here, our layout space, I type in PSLTSCALA and I set that to zero. And that allows me to see what I see. And you'll see, see those dashes when I zoom this thing to 20 scale. And I'm jumping, but to move this thing around, remember that layout space is effectively like think about it you being inside your house and it's a window into the world of model space. So right now I'm in the window, I've double clicked within the viewport and I'm able to manipulate my drawing. And I want to scale it to 20 scale, right? So I'm going to type Z enter for zoom, then scale. I'm going to go 1 forward slash 20 XP. And there goes my 20 scale. Now carefully I'm going to click my third trigger, the, the button on your mouse and hold it in to turn it into a pan tool. And I'm going to move in and scroll to our area, which is roughly that. Now, say I went like that and you actually zoomed in and out, you just messed your scale up. So just be cognizant of that, that your scales are sensitive in CAD. You do like that, then it's lost. You simply just type in Z, enter, S, enter, 1 forward slash 20, XP, enter, and we'll zoom it again. That little bit makes a difference though, folks. And then I'm going to type in PS, enter for paper space. And uh, that's, that looks pretty good to me. I'm going to pull this up a little bit so I give myself um, space for a title block. And I'm going to lock my viewport so I don't mess it up. I don't want to lose that scale and I have a tendency to forget. So um, I right click on the viewport and I'm going to display locked and I'm going yes. Now when I double click in it I can move it and toggle it and touch the model space. I've opened my window and I'm reaching out and touching the leaves of the trees but um, I can't move them. I can't change the scale. It's locked. So let me REA. REA is a Regan all and it's just sometimes the CAD gets clogged I guess uh, for lack of a better word and um, you need to refresh it and so it'll show you the properties of your line. So now you can see my contours are dashed the way I like them, maybe a little bit too long, but I'm not gonna mess with that too much, you all have fun. Um, but I need to manipulate still these parcel lines, okay? So I'm gonna right click on it, I'm gonna go to properties. And right now the line type scale is set to one, so let's try 0 .05. 0 .05 worked last time, so let's try that again. And you're gonna have some overlap for property lines because the way they the, the way they come in, they come in overlapped. Um, that's just the nature of the beast. So you can crop them or do what you want and play with that if it if it bothers you bad. But I want to get these to look a little bit better than a little bit bigger. So 0.08. Another thing you can do with your lines, if they're polylines, which most of these should be. Um, line type generation, you want to enable that, and that just keeps the spacing proportionate. And let me show you, we demonstrate that on the contour. I'm going to click on this contour, and it has a lot of grip points, so if it's disabled, you'll see how it changes the spacing of the contour. See how that one's really long? It's a great example. That one's really long, right? And now when I go enabled, it fixes that irregularity for me, and so it makes everything continuous, nice and neat. So you want to use enabled when you're doing parcel lines or contours. Um, it's just a graphic thing. It looks better. So, I made that 0.04. Let me try 0.03. I'm going to like 0.04. That's fine. It's not. I'm checking. All right. I'm going to leave it at 0.05. <laughs> Alright, so now I'm going to do it. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. Um, let me do it the, the better way first. I'm going to go back into model space. And I'm going to use a tool called Isolate, Layer Isolate. And that's L A Y I S O. Enter. And then I'm going to click on the parcels layer. And now you see that I have, I'm just seeing parcels. Now, I've noticed in 2010, or the newer versions of CAD, when you do a lay ISO, um, sometimes it'll freeze or lock. Like, well, why, why did his things disappear and mine lock? Well, let me show you that in case you run into that problem. Lay ISO, you see where it has a settings. If you type in S, enter for settings, 
you can specify what lay ISO does. You can isolate a layer, turn it off, or block or fade it. I, I turn things off. That's why the best way I like to use it. So, Okay, so I've isolated these layers. And um, I said that I liked what? The 0.05, right? You see that's set to that right there? So now I'm just going to select all these. Well, first I'm going to make sure they're polylines. So I'm going to type in PE, enter, M for multiple, polyline edit. And I'm just going to select this and enter. And those are all polylines already. If they weren't polylines, it'll ask me if I want to convert them into polylines. And they need to be polylines in order to do that generation, the, the line type um, enabling I showed you a second ago. So um, you see it says now line type scale varies because one we set to 0.05, another one was the default of the line. So we're going to make it 0 0.05, bam, and we're going to go down here to line type generation, and we're going to enable. All right. All right. REA. And maybe that's a little too small, so I don't know. It looks kind of funny. Let's go back and look here. Yeah, let's make that a little bit bigger. Go 0.07, see what it looks like. Yeah, and like I said, you're seeing this overlap. That's why it's not very clear. I mean, you can go back in and break the lines and crop them and keep them neat. And this is where that's just one of the things of working with GIS. It's not smart enough to do like a, a clean line. And maybe there's a way to manipulate in CAD. Um, if there is, I don't know. So if you find out, let me know too. So there goes your parcel lines. At least you have an outline to build for them. And then I'm going to do a L A Y O N lay on, and that turns on all the other layers. And there you go. So now you have parcels, a street center line, and you have buildings. Um, and they also gave me other layers, but they're not really applicable to, to CAD. And they gave me the land use and zoning, which you know a better demonstrator to use, utilize through Photoshop for rendering. And in the next tutorial, I'll show you guys that. So that's basically the starts of making a base map, and then you'd come in and uh, put in your title block, your information, whatever you're going to call it, and your name, the date, and all the standard stuff, you know, North Arrow scale. Um, and that's about it. So that's a quick tutorial on how to make a base map using um, both GIS and AutoCAD. Now, this is a continuation of an earlier um, tutorial, video tutorial on using acquiring GIS information um, and setting up your layer and your you know your whole layout and the, the space in ArcGIS and then the second portion of it is really demonstrating again a little but to much more detail the exporting of the CAD files and then once you get them in CAD manipulating them and creating a, uh, a decent base map. Have fun!